Welcome to Home Renovision. Today I'm going to show you how to install a dimmer switch and you can do it yourself. The beauty of doing electrical work in your own home is in most cases building codes allow homeowners to change their own electrical fixtures. That includes plugs, switches, GFI, dimmer switches, light fixtures, all that kind of stuff. Man, one of the most dangerous part of this job is opening the package. Ay, ay, ay. What are they thinking? <laughs> wow. Here we go. So before we get started, I'm going to read through the instructions real quick off camera not to waste your time. Be right back. All right, so this is going to be a demonstration for anybody, whether you understand electrical or not. You don't have to. <laughs> Life is pretty simple. Electrical and home situations nowadays is pretty much, it's so safe, it's ridiculous. So not having to understand everything about the electrical world to change a fixture is not necessary. But you do have to know every single step and have the proper tools. So on the back of this particular fixture, it has something called a strip gauge. And that's how much of the coating of the wire you have to remove. Because in this situation, the wires go in the holes, you tighten the screws, and then there's a plate inside that tightens up to the wire, secures your wire. It's not always like that. Sometimes it's more traditional. This is for the ground wire. We'll get into all this in a minute, but you actually wrap the wire around it, so you actually strip more. So what you need is a set of strippers, and you have your gauge on here. Home wiring is 14 gauge almost exclusively. So you find the number 14, you back it up the, le the length that you need, you pinch, give it a twist, and it slides right off. This is designed to remove the, the covering around the wire without damaging the wire. All right. You can confirm that you made the right cut. Maybe just a little bit too long. The other tool you should have when doing electrical is a square end pair of pliers like this. This is how got a great cutter on it, but it's also good for twisting your wires together. We'll show you that. The other thing is you're going to want one of these bad boys. Power tester. This confirms that what you're doing, see that? It means it's on and it's ready to tell you. And when we pull this off, it'll tell us if the power is live. Now, I ran downstairs and I turned off the breaker, and the easiest way to do that is to turn the light on, turn off the breaker, and see if the light turns off. And in most cases, that means the power's off. <laughs> Sometimes it means your bulb is burned out, so it's not a guarantee, which is why it's nice to have one of these things. Now, almost all light fixtures are attached with 632 screws, and that requires a drill bit, a number one Robertson. But most of these screws also have a slot in them, so if the screw gets stripped, you can still use a flathead screwdriver to remove it. Here we go. Now, I have no way to know if the power is on here or not, so I'm going to lift the box straight up and out. And there's my wires. Green light. If there was power, that would turn red and it would start to beep. Okay, sometimes just on contact that happens. Don't let it freak out. Okay, there's no power in here. So in this situation, we currently have a dimmer switch. All right, and we're going to pull off our little morettes. Wow, they're really on well. And you're going to have one like this. Now here's what you're going to know. Inside the box, there are two white wires and two black wires. So what's going on is we have a white and a black coming from the panel, and we have a white and a black traveling to the light. And the way electric circuit works is the white wire has to be continuous, and then the black wire, when, there's, when the fixture is working, is continuous. And the switch breaks that con continuity. So when the switch is off, the power can't travel through the black wire. When you turn the switch on, you engage the continuity, so then you can flow, okay? It's kind of like a, a bridge being up or down. Traffic stops, traffic can move. It's really that simple, okay? So if you have a regular light switch, then you'll have the, the power in, coming to the bottom screw, and the power leaving on the top screw. If you already have a dimmer switch, then you're just going to have a black and a black, and it's reversible. So you don't have to worry about which one you use. Now, we're done with this one. Get that out of here. So on our switch today, it is a basic dimmer. And you will see that it says top. So this is in the off position, and that'll slowly bring it up to full power. Okay? And so, what this is asking for is one black wire in here, one black wire in here, ground on the bottom. Now our ground is a little bit short, so we're going to start with that. And at the end of here, there's little jagged teeth. Just pinch and turn, and it creates this beautiful little loop. 
Okay, and we can use that to put across our green wire. And then you can pinch the wire shut. <laughs> and then you take your drill with your number one bit, or you can use a screwdriver. You don't have to have a drill for this. All right, and now we're ready to go. Now, my two black wires are both unique here because they've been twisted into place, and what we're looking to do is bring it straight. So we use our square and pliers, and just in a couple of different locations, apply pressure and we straighten out the wire. Because it's a little short, we don't want to just go cutting everything back and starting over again. All right. The strip gauge, these are actually in pretty good shape. So what we're going to do is one wire at a time. We'll start with the one that has the most flexibility. Push it right into the, the sheathing on the wire, touches the back of the switch, and that's it. Done. And then this one here, it doesn't matter which hole, this is designed so you could have multiple wires coming off the same switch. There we go. That's it. Now, when you're putting your wires back into a box, you want to pinch them, okay, so that they're S curve. You want them to have that flexibility so that when you push it back, you have a, an S curve that's going to collapse. So it'll bend up and down, okay? If you just have it straight out and you push, they'll buckle out the sides, make all kinds of mess. And this is perfect. This is our 632 screw. I always start on backwards a little bit just to make sure that I hear that it clicks. And I know that it's set the thread, and so I'm not going to strip the screw. When you're changing a fixture, always throw out the old screws. Okay? This is not the strongest metal, and if there's any damage at all on it, you run the risk of stripping the screw before you install it. And that just creates a whole lot of work. Okay? Because it is a new Decora design, we need the corresponding plate. Because this will not work. All right. Let me put this over top. And then you take a look. Do I like it? Is it big enough? Because you have an option. You can buy different size plates, especially if you have an old house with plaster walls or somebody's done some rework and they made a mess around the switch like this. You can buy an oversized plate to cover up all those imperfections. Same thing. Hear that? Listen to the click. Right there. Now I know I can go forward. Okay. Finish by setting your screws up. And if you like this kind of information, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Now all I got to do is go back, turn the power on, and I've got a dimmer switch. Click the video to see how this project turned out.